Praise God, brethren, and by the names of Mr. Praise Matovladison, I've been blessed to share with you this message. But before we go into the sharing, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to glorify your name. We want to bless your holy name. Spirit of God, may you come and intervene in whatever thing we are going to share. Spirit of wisdom, we welcome you. Spirit of understanding and knowledge, we welcome you. Come take control. Father, I disappear as you appear. May your revelation come clear to those who need it. In the name of Jesus, I pray in me. Today, I wanted to share with you this topic. It's not a big one, small. We are going to share something small. It is a call to evangelism. But before we go into that, to know what's a call to evangelism, who is an evangelist in the first place? An evangelist is you and me. We are the, we, we, it is you and me. We are those people who have given in our lives to Christ. Our lives have been changed. We have received Christ deep into our lives and that we walk a Christ life. Then you, you, you are qualified to become an evangelist. If you, Christ has been revealed into your life, you qualify to be an evangelist. But let me explain to those people who don't know whether they are evangelists or they are pastors. So an evangelist is like a preacher but his or her message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of the things that make an evangelist is that for him, he preaches the gospel, but the gospel that he preaches is that he preaches Jesus Christ to the people alone. That's, that's the work of an evangelist. In every society he gets into, in every place he gets into, whether he meets people or he does not meet people, his work is to preach Jesus Christ to people. An evangelist is one who wins souls to Christ and he's an expert in that area. So, if you have been sitting there and you don't know whether you can win souls to Christ, listen to this message. It's, one, it's, a, it's an encouragement to those people who have been fearing, those people who don't know whether they are evangelists. Let me tell you this. If we are to relate the positions in Christ or the gifts and callings that the Holy Spirit has, has given us, an evangelist is the most powerful because he brings people to Christ. The pastor he preaches, the prophet he prophesies, the teacher he teaches, then the deacons, they, they mentor somehow people, they care for people. But an evangelist, he does the greatest work in the kingdom of God. For him, his work is to win people. Everyone should admire to win people. The Bible says, blessed are the feet that bring good news. Blessed are the feet that take good news. Why are called to evangelism? Eight billion people. Statistics, the statistics of the world show that eight billion people have never heard of Jesus Christ. And in those eight billion people, there are the youth siblings, nephews, the judge, the great great judge, the great great brothers. Me, when I looked around, I, 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 I realized that my brother was there. He has never heard of Jesus Christ and I'm born again. And I didn't know that I'm the one to preach to him. To, 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 to reveal, to, I am the one to bring Jesus Christ to him. I saw that my siblings, my nephews around me, the people in the society we live with, look around the most, look around the people who are, who have most around. Look around the people who are Catholics. Look around the people who, go, who, who still go to, to sorcery. Look around. Eight billion people have never heard of Jesus Christ. And it is sad that some, they don't know whether there is Satan or God. They don't know whether God exists or Satan exists. For them, they walk. That's the way of their life. Another thing that touched me, why I call to evangelism, is that when Jesus was living here, he said, Behold, I go to my Father to make places for you where where you will go after I come for you. Jesus said, I will be coming back soon. But the, the real truth, Jesus won't come back right now. Because when he was leaving, he said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, as a witness to all the nations, and the end will come. So we want to see Jesus coming back for his sin, but you have not preached to your brother. You have not preached to those 8 billion people. Those 8 billion people, if they are not preached to, 
Jesus won't come back. I'm assuring you, he won't appear whether in this year or the next year. But if you want to see Jesus in the next five years to come or to come for his sins, let's preach the gospel. Because that is Matthew 24. And this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. And the end will come. If you want to see the end coming, for some of us, we are, we are fed up of this world. We are fed up of the, hate, the hatred in this world. We want to see Jesus Christ come back for us. So, this is a call to evangelism, or a call to evangelize to the people who have never heard of Jesus Christ. Why is it that they are un, still unreached people? Why is it that there is still 8 billion people who have not heard of Jesus Christ, have never heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it limited access to those people? Is it limited churches? Is it limited workers in the kingdom of God? Oh, is it limited vision to take Jesus Christ to the world? As praise one God, we have this vision. We are taking Jesus Christ to the youth. We don't know, we, we don't know when we'll end this, but we are starting to take Jesus Christ to the youth. And it will start today, it will start tomorrow, it will never end until we see all youth they have a Christ life. Until we see all youth when Jesus Christ is revealed into them. So we are still asking ourselves, why are these 8 billion people unreached? Oh, there are some people who have heard of Jesus Christ, but they have gone back again to the same things that the, the, the same things that they were saved into. They have gone back to sorcery, they have gone back to the world to take to take alcohol. What I think is that why these 8 billion people have not been rich is that because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The laborers in the kingdom of or in the kingdom of God, they are few. The people who know what exactly to do to win souls, they are few. I'm not saying that we, are, we don't have evangelists. We do have. There are many, a thousand, maybe 10,000, maybe 1 million evangelists in the world, and they don't know what to do. Would I want to take you through the steps or, or the things that make an evangelist? Or what an evangelist must do to win people? Or what are the things that make an evangelist? That is Matthew 9, 37. It says, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. So in the kingdom of God, we have limited workers who know what exactly to do. I'm not saying that we don't have evangelists, but there are limited people who know what exactly to do to win the souls, to preach Jesus Christ. One of the things I have seen in, I have seen in this journey of salvation, or oh, one of the things I have seen the evangelists do, because me, I'm just starting. Yeah, I'm just starting. By God's grace, I'm just starting to become an evangelist. One of the things I've seen the evangelists do is that when they go whether to street preaching or prison or door-to-door -door or hospital, they don't preach Jesus Christ in their messages. That has made us to, to still go back why 8 billion people have not been reached. It's because when we go out there to preach the gospel, we don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yet, one of the things is that an evangelist preaches Jesus Christ alone. Not because they don't know how to preach Jesus Christ. It's because some have been deceived. Some have been taken up by worldly things, by materialism. Some have been taken up to, be, to, become, to become the message to preach to the people. An evangelist, one of the things, should preach the gospel of Jesus Christ alone, just as we see Philip. We are going to reflect on this man, Philip. Philip was a good one. He was an evangelist too. So when I say we'll reflect on Philip, in Acts 8.5, we see Philip. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Philip had a lot to say. He had a lot, he, he had many gospels to preach. But one thing he desired is to preach Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when Philip went to the city of Samaria and found those people, and he saw those people, he preached Jesus Christ to them. Not, not knowing what will come out, not, see, not, not reflecting on, on any other gospel, he preached Jesus Christ. This is one thing that we have to do in our generation as the youth. If we are to reach those 8 billion people, if we are to reach those Muslims, 
if we are to reach those people who have not given in their lives to Christ, if we are to reach to our siblings, our cousins, we must preach Jesus Christ, not any other gospel. Don't preach about wealth. No, we are not called to preach any other gospel, but Jesus Christ. Another thing, an evangelist must be an expert in soul winning. We are going to go through studies of, of winning people, of winning souls, of, of going to fields, entering fields to, to, to win souls. We see this man, Philip, that Philip, after he had preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that multitudes came to hear what he was speaking because that's what they needed. Why is it that people are, are wasting time preaching other things and they end up not winning anyone? Week by week, you go to street preaching and you, you, have, you have not won any, any soul to Jesus Christ. An evangelist, he must be an expert in soul winning. What do we mean by an expert? After you have preached Jesus Christ, don't let people just meander or go away. No. You have to be an expert to win their souls. The Bible says in Acts 8.8 8, that after this, Philip had preached the gospel that great was the joy in that city of Samaria and many people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Acts 8.8 8, that after Philip had preached the gospel, that many people who were in that sermon, the, who had Philip speak about Jesus Christ, who had Philip speak the life of Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ had done for him, what Jesus Christ will do for the people who, who, who will do for the people who love him, that the, the city was filled with joy, with joy, the joy of God, the joy of Jesus Christ, that many people gave into their lives to Jesus Christ. An evangelist he must be an expert in soul winning. I will, we are going to go through teachings on how to win souls, on how to be experts. But these are things, we are just going through the things that make an evangelist in our generation. If we are, if we are to go to that call of evangelism or to evangelize. An evangelist, the third thing is that an evangelist must allow to be led by the Spirit himself, not to be led by his will, any other person, or the, the scripture says in Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. So walk circumspectant, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. The part B is what I like, chapter 2. It says, therefore do not be unwise, but know what the will of the Lord is. So an evangelist, he walks by the will of God. He preaches the gospel by the will of God. We see Philip in Acts 26, that now, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This was a desert place. Now, Philip is leaving town to go to a desert place or a village place to go to the to, to go down, down deep into the village. Once, but now it has become a business. They are no longer led by the Spirit what to do, in what in which places they should go. No. But look at Philip. One, one we should follow. He, after he had preached the gospel in the town, the Bible says that an angel of the Lord spoke to him. There is one who is ready also. Go to the village and preach the gospel there. Philip did not hesitate. That, ah, you know God, now why do you need me to go to the village? One of the things, if we are to be evangelists in our generations, if we are to do God's work to evangelize to, to, to the people of God, we need to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Philip, he shows us that he held to the Holy Spirit. And he said, okay, if it is the will, who am I to refuse? He stopped to that desert place. Which many of us have to go to villages, leaving town to go to villages to preach there. You know, village, village life is not good. You start reasoning. But one of the things that make evangelists is that they allow to be led by the spirit if you are to be a good evangelist you must allow to be led by the spirit of god alone number four is that an evangelist must have thoroughly knowledge of the word of god just like philip philip in acts 8 30 the bible says that philip when he had reached that man or when he had reached to the place where he was going to preach where the angel of the lord has determined him to preach that philip when he reached there, the Bible shows us that he had thoroughly knowledge of the word of God. Let me give you some instances that 
one man went to preach. As he was preaching, then someone rose up to question him and reason him out about what he about the message he was preaching. So he, he could not defend the message he, he was preaching, and it is most so in our generation. We are we, when we get one scripture like this and we understand it better, or when we get one revelation like this, then we go out to preach the gospel. Yet we have to sit down and listen. What is it that God you want me to preach to these people? Philip had thorough knowledge of the word of God. In other words, he was Bible-centered. The, the word of God was in him. Whether you ask him of what scripture, of what verse, he will tell you and explain it to you better. We see, so Philip ran to him and had him reading the prophet. That he had what this guy was reading or reasoning out. Then he said, do you understand what you're reading? That shows us clearly that Philip had clear, had thorough knowledge of the word of God, which is not in our generation. Many of us, we are driven with our own knowledge. When we read one scripture, hey, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Then we go to streets. Then you find someone who is telling you, who's God? Who's God? And you cannot explain who's this God because you don't have thorough knowledge of the word of God. If you are to be a good evangelist, if you are to follow Jesus Christ, if you are to win or to come to this call of evangelist, of evangelism, you must be good. You must have that thorough knowledge of the word of God by reading the Bible daily, by meditating on the word. I, 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 I showed you how to meditate on 113 scriptures in 25 minutes. But you can do it more and you become a living Bible. Paul, Paul he reached a time when he was a written epistle, When his life was a Bible. That people read him and they understand Christ. We must reach a level like that. Number five is that an evangelist must be quick in his teaching. Just like Philip. I told you we are going to reflect on this guy Philip or this evangelist Philip. He was good in everything. Philip in Acts 8, 34 to 35, when he reached that unique man and he asked him, you understand what you're reading? So the unique man answered Philip and said, I don't know. But he asked him, of whom does the prophet, okay, he asked him in that text where he was reading. What, did, what does this mean? What does it mean? So Philip, when he started to speak, because he was quick in his teaching, he knew that they had no time with this unique man. Because he was traveling and Philip had another place to go. So they had no time. They had limited time. So what I can encourage you as we are going to this call of evangelism, uh, as we go out there to preach to those people, let's know that these people have no time. When they give us like five minutes, we must be quick in our, uh, in our preaching. That the Bible says when Philip opened his mouth beginning at the scripture he preached jesus christ he did not explain to him what he wanted more he preached jesus christ that at the opening of his mouth when you go to the street preaching at the opening of your mouth we don't need to know your name whether you are who or you are from which church that you will bring at the end or at the conclusion but start with christ we see philip that at the beginning of his speaking he preached Jesus Christ to him. Then the unique man understood the scripture better. We are, we are more in, in, in preaching about ourselves. We are quick in preaching. We are quick in preaching about our churches, about our pastors. That's not our, that's not our job. Let's preach Jesus Christ. Let's follow okay, this evangelist Philip. He preached Jesus Christ. If we are to reach that, those 8 billion people who have not reached, who are, who are unreached, we must be quick in our preaching because these people have no time. Imagine when you go to someone's home and he gives you five minutes and you start to explain, you know, I'm from so-and-so church, from so-and-so village. What will it profit him or her? You preach Jesus Christ in those five minutes. If she understands or if he understands, that is better. Number six, an evangelist. He must lead people to Jesus Christ, not to prayer. Why are the eight billion people still remaining? Is because the work many evangelists when they are when they are out there to preach Jesus Christ after they had preached after they have preached Jesus Christ to those people now they show them the other part 
Now, you know, this thing you have entered into, it is not an, an easy thing. You must pray daily six hours. Now, you are showing this person or you are showing this man or woman that he must pray or he, he must be engaged into prayer for six hours in a day. He has not been praying for this last six, six years. He has not been praying for the last three months. Then you are telling him this thing you have entered into. If you don't pray, then trouble will come to you. Then if, if it was me that you are telling me if I don't pray and I've been not praying, nothing has been happening to me. If I don't pray now, that something will happen. Why don't I go back to the same place that I was in? That's why 8 billion people have not been engaged to. Okay, there are some who have been engaged to, but after a while they have gone back. Because of the things the evangelists tell these people, that ah, you must fast. This person has been not fasting. The work of an evangelist is to show Jesus Christ to these people, not to preach fasting, not to preach prayer. No, you're not going, you, you, you don't need to go out there to preach prayer. You don't need to go out there to preach about fasting. That's the work of a teacher or a pastor. Leave the work of a teacher to a teacher and do the work of an evangelist, which you were called to. You don't show people fasting or prayer, but you show people Jesus Christ. Number seven, an evangelist must fill those people with the Holy Spirit, not leaving them to the world. Why the 8 billion people? Some have, have been preached to Jesus Christ and they accepted. But after a while, because they have not been firm in, the, in, in, this, in, this, what, in this salvation, because they have not been firm in what they entered into, they have gone back. Because after we, 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 we preach to these people and they give their lives to Christ, then the next thing we let them go. Not filling them the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Yet the Bible is very clear. That after you have preached to those people, fill them with the Holy Spirit. We can follow an example of Paul. Paul, when he reached at Ephesus in Acts 19, 2 to 6, he said to them, Hey, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Or do you believe in the Holy Spirit? They asked him, Who is the Holy Spirit? Okay, believing him, it wouldn't be a problem. But we have never even heard of the Holy Spirit. It is our first time, and they had been saved already. They have been preached Jesus Christ to already. But they have never heard of Jesus Christ. And they are walking a journey, of us, a journey of salvation. One of the greatest pillars in salvation is that when one gets saved, to be firm in salvation, he must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We see that after Paul, he asked, after Paul asking them, were you filled with the Holy Spirit? They say no. Then he baptized them again with the Holy Spirit. After he had baptized them, the working of the Spirit started to work in these people. Some started to prophesy. Miracles were done in, in them. They started to speak in tongues. Now, just imagine, after you have preached to this person and you live to, you, you, you tell him, and now you're saved, you can go your way. After a week, you find him back to, to drunkenness. It is because you have not filled this person with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into someone's life, he starts to bring convictions. He starts to refuse that person of some things. Now, you have given your lives to Jesus Christ. You should not take alcohol. You should not go back to adultery. You should not go back to this and this. As an evangelist, oh, if we are to reach those unreached 8 billion people, after we have preached to them, let's fill them with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, He will strengthen them. He will make them firm in the what? Firm in what they have entered into. An evangelist, another thing is the eighth thing is that an evangelist, he baptizes these people, just like Philip. When Philip he had finished preaching to the eunuch man, he, he, he asked, the eunuch man is the one even who asked Philip, what hinders me to be baptized? Can we go and be baptized? Let me give you a smile here. If you are in a place and there is some big, some big waters surrounding you, or there is water where you can baptize that person, after immediately he has given in their, he, he, they have given in their lives to Christ, you baptize them with them. You baptize them with water. If not so that you are in a place where there is no water, then you can direct them to a church that is on a good foundation of Jesus Christ that they may be baptized. Because baptism is a key in salvation. Okay, it's a key 
to, to those new converts that it will make make that new convert firm in Jesus Christ. An evangelist, the ninth thing which I like is that an evangelist he must operate in the gifts of working miracles. There are some people, let me assure you, I am assuring you, I've seen this. There are some people in this life, okay, maybe they are among the 80 billion people. They won't just believe this Jesus Christ we are taking to them unless they have seen miracles happen around. How will you preach that Jesus saves and heals and you cannot heal the people around you? There are some people who are hardened in inside. Their hearts are hardened to that extent that they cannot believe Jesus Christ unless they see miracles happen around. If you are an evangelist, I would suggest that you go and cry to the Lord and tell him, Lord, if I go to this, to, to this call of evangelism, please help me to work. Help me and you work miracles inside of me. That you may, you may bring you miracles that they may be worked through me. Not I to work miracles, but your miracles be worked through me that people may know you. Yes, an evangelist must operate in working of miracles. Because they are those 8 million people, uh, let me assume that it is 1 million people who won't believe unless they see a miracle. How will you prove to them that Jesus heals and saves when you cannot heal? Last but not least, an evangelist looks for a church that is firm to the new converts. An evangelist, let me assume that you have preached to 20 people and they have given their lives to Christ. No, that doesn't make you a pastor. Leave the work of a pastor to a pastor. An evangelist, he has not been called to make church, uh, to, to build a church. An evangelist, after he had preached to these pe 20 people, he either takes them to a good church or he takes them to a, a church of a good foundation that they may be, they may be established more that they may know Christ more. An evangelist, your work, after you preach to these people, you have done all the steps that we have gone through. The 11th step is that you look for a good church for those people, that they may be taught more about Christ, that they may know Jesus Christ more. The last thing is that an evangelist uses the key of multiplication in leading others, in leading others to lead others to Jesus Christ. We can reflect on this scripture in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. It says, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. This was, uh, he, he was an evangelist too. And he was saying, Of the things that you have heard me do, oh, of the things that you have heard me, of the things you have seen me do, commit to faithful men, who will do to others, an evangelist he must use a he must use a key of multiplication. If we are to reach to the eight billion people, we don't need addition. We need multiplication. If you are one person in your church from your church area and you are the only person who does evangelism, you go from Monday to Friday and win two people. Then how is how will how will how will this these eight billion people be reached to? If you are the only person who preaches Jesus Christ, or you are the only pe person who evangelizes, if we are to win these people, or to reach these 8 billion people, we must use this key of, uh, of multiplication. We must show, we, we must pick some faithful men who will, who will understand Jesus Christ the more, and we preach to them. We give them key things to do when they go to evangelize. We show them how to win souls. One thing maybe one, what I know is that because now evangelism has become a business. Now many evangelists, when they, they, they see teaching someone to do what he does, now it's like he won't get the money he, he is getting. So now they have ended up not teaching others. And yet this is kingdom thing, not business thing. So next time I'm to be here, I will be teaching about the Great Commission, the Great Commission that Jesus Christ left to us, and how to make disciples of the kingdom, how to go to the fields, how to win, how to walk in, this, in, in these things that make an evangelist. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name that you have been with us through the entire session. 
We glorify your holy name. May your wisdom continue to bring us to you. May we continue to work in the area of, may we continue to work in that area of being evangelists, good evangelists. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins. He was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.